Mr. Speaker, I rise today to commemorate the 101st anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Over the years in Rhode Island, I've spoken with many Armenian Americans who have recounted the stories their parents or grandparents told them about living through the horror of the Armenian Genocide. Even after 100 years, there is a still a deep wound in the heart of the Armenian people, particularly as genocide and atrocious human rights violations continue to be used as weapons of war in the 21st century. Today, hardly a week goes by without news of horrific human rights violations somewhere around the world. The first step to stop these abuses is to acknowledge them for what they are, and then to confront them. And that's why it's important that the United States government finally recognize and call the Armenian Genocide what it is and what it was, a systematic attempt by the Ottoman Empire to annihilate the Armenian people. The challenges, of course, continue today for the people of Armenia. All of us know earlier this month, violence again erupted in Nagorno-Karabakh. President Sarkeesian called it the most wide-scale military action that Azerbaijan has tried to carry out since the establishment of the 1994 ceasefire regime. It's critical that the United States remain deeply engaged in resolving this conflict. I recently met with the Armenian ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Huvu Hanisian, to discuss relations between our two countries and what role the United, the United States must play to help promote a resolution of this long-standing conflict. I've received briefings on the current situation. I will continue to advocate for critical American leadership to protect the innocent men, women, and children who are living in Nagorno-Karabakh. But as we address this current crisis, it's also critical that we continue to push for recognition of the Armenian Genocide. History is clear. 101 years ago, one and a half million Armenian men, women, and children were brutally and systematically murdered while living under the Ottoman Empire. That's not an opinion, it's not an interpretation, and it's not an allegation. It is a fact. In a cable sent to the U.S. Secretary of State on July 10, 1915, the U.S. Ambassador to the Ottoman Empire confirmed the persecution of Armenians by, quote, systematic attempts to uproot peaceful Armenian populations and through arbitrary arrest, terrible tortures, wholesale expulsions and deportations from one end of the empire to the other, accompanied by frequent instances of rape, pillage, and murder, turning into massacre to bring destruction and destitution on them." End quote. And after 101 years of waiting, it's time for our president and the United States government to recognize this fact and to acknowledge this atrocity as the first genocide of the 21st century. Armenia is an important friend and ally of the United States. And it's critical that we stand with our friends and honestly acknowledge the evil of the Armenian Genocide. In closing, I'd like to leave you, Mr. Speaker, with the words of Pope Francis, who last year reminded all of us that, quote, whenever memory fades, it means that evil allows wounds to fester. Concealing or denying evil is like allowing a wound to keep bleeding without bandaging it, end quote. After more than 100 years of waiting, it's time for the United States government to finally recognize the Armenian genocide as the first genocide of the 21st century. I yield back.